Hi, it's Martin here. Uh, no, I'm not making a cup of tea, uh, but after this video, I think I'll make myself a nice cup of Yorkshire tea. Uh, this is uh, this is going to be the uh, the uh, subject for the still life. I'm doing a still life in my back garden. I just sh thought I'd show you how I go about it. So this is going to be the subject of the still life, the teapot. I've got my background set up. It's a piece of white card. Um, I I've bent the card uh, from from the vertical to the horizontal so that we don't get any dark edges uh, in the picture because I want this to be a high a high key picture. Uh, I'm going to use my Chamonix uh, F1 uh, large format camera 4x5 uh, to take the picture and, and uh, I'll be able to show you some of the uh, simple movements you can use um, with this camera to make, a, to make a better picture to control depth of focus. While I've while I'm, uh, got the camera out I might, might as well show you some of the movements this is the front standard. Now, the first movement I'll show you is called swing. Uh, this is primarily for controlling depth of field, uh, plane of focus, um, and also you can use it for artistic uh, results. You can throw things uh, in and out of focus wherever you want them. Uh, which, with most of the movements on these cameras, you can do that, but. Uh, Basically, it controls uh, focus, the plane of focus. Um, then we've got um, shift. That's where you can move the lens side by side to side. Now, this one's used primarily for um, adjusting uh, your composition. You might have, might have got your tripod set up, uh, and it's just not right. But everything's in focus. But you just want to move the subject slightly. Uh, so you can either move it to the left or to the right. That's something you'd use quite a lot uh, in large format photography. And then on the, on the front stand we've, we've got the where the panel holds the lens. We can uh, tilt tilt that whole front, front standard. And again, that that's used to, to control depth of field. It's used a, a lot in uh, landscape work where you would tilt down very slightly. Uh, to get the foreground in focus virtually up to the lens and, and to infinity or again you can use it for artistic effects and then another comp composition aid is rise and fall we can lift the front standard up or down and again that helps in uh, uh, in composition as I say you might have just got your camera set up everything's just right but you just want to move the image on the film and you can do that by using the rise and fall. So that's the movements I've got on this camera, on the uh, front standard. On the rear standard, um, we've got tilt, rear tilt, forward twi tilt, and then we've also got swing. Small amount of swing with this camera. As I say, uh, this camera is uh, it does all I want to do for landscape work but uh, it doesn't have all the movements some cameras have more movements than these and some have less so that's basically uh, uh, the movements on these cameras or on this camera so now let's get on the, the photographing this uh, this teapot uh, the first thing I'm going to do is open the lens and that opens the shutter on the lens and it means I can see through the, the back of the camera, the ground glass. If I can find my loop. Now because I'm in the shade I can actually see what I'm actually uh, looking at using the loop. So I get the loop up to the screen and just check round the composition and the focus. Now the first thing I'm seeing is that the camera's a little bit low because I'm I want to get a little bit of that teapot in at the top, so I'm just going to raise the camera up. Whoops. There's that many knobs and, and buttons you can get mixed up with it all. So I've got the camera pointing up slightly. And then again, looking, get the camera level, it's got a spirit level. I'll just um, make sure that back doesn't move. Lock that down. 
in a moment. Bring that leg up a little bit. Without a bit of a faff. Right, so. Right, the first thing I need to do, I need to get a little bit more uh, foreground in this picture. So I'm just going to move the um, front standard down slightly. That's lovely. That's just giving me that little bit more foreground at the front uh, at the front of the the teapot. And that looks about right there. Now. We have a problem, two problems I can see. The first one is I've got reflections and because I'm outside I can't control what's reflecting off this shiny surface. Uh, I can fix some of this, this in Photoshop. The only way you're going to get rid of these it really is working in a studio. Uh, so I'm not going to worry too much about that. But the other thing is we need to talk about plane of focus here. Um, when you look at the front of the teapot and the handle it's on a different plane of focus. So that focus runs that way and that focus runs that. So if I focus on the back, the front's going to be out of focus. If I focus on the front, the back is going to be out of focus. Even if I stop this lens fully down, I doubt that I would get everything in focus. So I'm going to have to use some movements. Uh, and the other thing is that because I'm tilting the camera slightly downwards, that this plane of focus is running like that, but the plane of focus on the on the uh, teapot is is straight. So the things I have to address is the plane of focus from there, from the front of the teapot to the uh, to the handle, and the forward plane of focus. So first of all, I'll fix the um, the um, the straight plane of focus. I can do that simply by tilting the front standard to making making it level as a spirit level at the top so I can make that level so that's now level and parallel to the front of that teapot if you understand what I'm saying and then I have to do the same with the back so I'm going to tilt that back until that's straight so that means now that all that plane of focus is dead straight it's not tilting it's dead straight the only thing I have to address now is the focus plane of focus from the the, um, the front of the teapot to the handle and the way I do that is by using swing so for the first thing I have to do is focus on the teapot um, the spout right at the front of the spout and then I'm going to swing the lens and put the lens on the same plane of focus as this is running. So that's running this way. This lens is twisting to go that way. So I'll focus on that and then swing until this comes into focus. And I'll do that three times. And then that, that, that will uh, make sure that the, uh, the uh, plane of focus is running level with the teapot this way. As though we were taking it this way from this angle. But, it, but because I'm at this angle, it'll... Uh, get the teapot um, spout in focus and the handle so I'm going to do some uh, a swing movement just going to focus on the uh, teapot as I say I'm not using a, a focusing cloth because I can see quite clearly there's no sharp reflections here now I'm just going to swing the front and the handle comes into focus and then refocus on the front, swing again, focus on the front again, and then just swing again slightly, these are very slight movements, and then focus again. And now I've got all the teapot in focus uh, from, as I say, from the spout to the handle. The only thing I have to do now is uh, stop the lens down to make sure that everything from the uh, middle of the teapot to the teapot lid is in focus. So I'm going to take a light meter reading. Uh, because it's going to be a high key image, uh, 
I'm just concentrating on the higher values. So if I look at the, uh, I'll probably shoot at f22 for this. If I look at the teapot there. I'm not shining on a very one of the bright highlights because I'm going to remove them in Photoshop. 15. So there's a stop difference between the um, teapot and the uh, the background. So what I'm going to do is place the teapot on zone 8. So I'm getting exposure of um, 15th of a second at f22. What I'm going to do is 8th uh, quarter half. I'm going to give half a second uh, exposure and that will place that teapot on zone 8 and, and the the background will go to zone 9 and that will give me the high key look that I'm after. Right, get the film. I'm using uh, FP4 for this. Paste the film into the film back. Close the lens. Uh, set my aperture to F22. And finally, I need to know what extension I've got on the bellows. And for that, I'm going to get a... Uh, you can guess this, I'd say it's about a stop. Because the bellows are extended further than the focal length of this lens, which is 150mm, uh, some of the light is um, not getting to the film. So I'm just going to measure it. Roughly. So about 210 millimetres. I've got a little chart here. 210 millimetres to... I need to increase my exposure by one stop to compensate for that bellows extension. So, the exposure then, being half a second, is going to be one second. So I'm setting my time now to one second. That's set, lens is shut. Pull the dark slide out and take the photo. Put the dark slide back in, black facing out showing it's exposed. And that's that picture taken. Now I'll show you um, I'll show you a different uh, composition and a slightly different way of working uh, on, on the same subject, photographing the same subject. Right, I'm going to reset the camera set, the camera camera all back to uh, to normal. So there's that many buttons and switches. You can get really mixed up with these, I do sometimes. Right, this time I'm going to photograph the teapot front on. And my idea with this one is just to have the spout in focus and then the rest of the teapot uh, falling out of focus. So for this, again, I'm going to have to uh, open the lens up, open the, uh, uh, open the shutter and then focus on the spout at the front and see what this is looking like. So the spout's in focus, but again, I want to be up with the camera. I might even go up a little higher with this because I want to get this teapot lid in. So I'm going to go a little bit higher and I'm going to have to point the camera down a little bit more. Just check that now. And then I'm going to use some uh, front fall. So again, I get some more of the foreground in. Just touch more. That looks right. But again, I'm left with that problem that the <coughs> I want to photograph front, front on so the plane of focus is equal going right through from front to back but the camera's plane of focus 
it's pointing this way, exaggerating that, where this, I want it straight. So again, I have to uh, turn the front, the front, the front tilt, use the front tilt and using the spirit level, bring that level. And then the same on the back. There's a lot of things to remember doing large format photography. But the more you do, the easier it gets. So, now I've done that, the rear standard, the front standard and the teapot are all running parallel. And I'll just again check for the composition. And because I've tilted it that way, I'm just going to bring it slightly down. Just check the bubble level. Is that right? That's correct. So I'm just bringing the composition down so I have more foreground. Just a bit more. better and then I just need to move just not got it dead dead centre I want this bit this this uh, teapot to be dead centre the picture rather than moving all the tripod and everything I'm just going to use a little bit of a um, shift just to slide it across because obviously when you're using this camera Everything's the wrong way around and upside down, so it can get confusing. So if I want to move this to the left, I have to go right. But you can see it all happening on the ground screen, on the ground glass screen. Right. Make sure there's no tilt on this one. So that's tightened down. So. Final check of a focus on the teapot to uh, spout. Just want that tip in focus. That's in focus. And then I'm going to use um, the lens iris to, to close it down very slowly just to te test the depth of focus. All I want it really is the the the, um, the spout uh, in focus about an inch and then slowly going out of focus and the rest out of focus. Just want slightly twisted actually that. Check that focus again. Now check this. Uh, so this is acting like a depth of field preview. And that's it. And it's roundabout. Oops, strange enough, F22 again. So, ready to take the picture now. Uh, close the, whoops, tighten that up a little bit more. Just check that again because I didn't have that tight. So if you find what I might do with this one is just put the dark cloth on because it has gone quite dark at 22 and uh, I'll just be able to oh, that's better I can see it now no that's fine I'm ready to take the picture close the shutter F22, uh, I'll just check the meter reading, but I think it'll be the same as the other. Yes, it's the same exposure as the first one. 
because when I, when I just to explain when I, when I meter on, on on anything here the meter is always attempting or it will do it'll put that on zone five which is there let's just see that it'll always it'll make white and it'll make it to zone five talking in grayscale uh, so I have to think that if I want to get that teapot brighter uh, I have to uh, increase my exposure so if I want to bring it to zone 8 I have to go from 5, 6, 7, 8 and that makes it brighter and that corresponds then because the background is one stop brighter that will go to zone 9 so I get a nice high key effect I'm not interested in shadows here the shadows uh, are not important in this so so right take the picture That slide in. Got the shutter. One second. Wait for a vibrations to stop. Take the picture. Dark slide back in. Black facing out. And that's it. So that's how to do a still life. Hopefully it'll uh, Hopefully they will have uh, turned out, uh, and I'll show you uh, show you in the video the the finished. Uh, well, I'll show you the scans because uh, I I, uh, I I use the hybrid workflow, so I'll show you the scans and then I'll show you the uh, finished images. As I said previously, there is reflections, uh, unwanted reflections uh, outside uh, in the open, uh, but I can uh, I can get rid of uh, quite a few of those in in Photoshop. To get rid of those you'd need to work in a, in, in a, a studio really. So uh, showing you the camera movements, showing you how a meter for it. Um, let's go get the film uh, developed and see if they've turned out. Okay thank you for watching. I'm back again and this time I've got a nice cup of Yorkshire tea. For that. I'm sure tea tastes uh, just as nice outside Yorkshire, but uh, it is nice, is it? Oh, yeah. Right, there's just one other thing that I thought I would mention before I show you the pictures of the teapot, uh, and that it's a thing that uh, can be confusing to people uh, first starting into large format uh, photography, and that's the uh, image circle. The image circle that a, a given lens produces. The bigger the circle, the more camera movements you have. The smaller the circle the more restricting it is and to show that I've just created a little chart with three circles on. The outer one is to, represents a large image circle, the inner one's a medium one and the the the, uh, the first one is um, a small image circle and this is a sheet of film. To place that in the small image circle you can see that with, there's no movement whatsoever so if you put a lens on your large format camera, you have no movements because if you move out of that image circle, it'll just go blank. Wherever the film's out of that image circle, it won't record anything. If we look at the medium image circle, you can see now we've got more movements. But again, we're, we're still slightly uh, restricted. But then if we look at the large one, the outer one, we've got loads of movement up and down, side by side. Um, and that's because it's a, a large image circle on the lens. And I just thought I'd mention it because um, when I first started into large uh, format photography, uh, the first one of the lenses that I bought, it didn't give me enough um, um, coverage so I could move the lens. As I did in the uh, second picture, you could see there's quite a bit of movement uh, on, on, the, on the bellows. So I, I, I made a mistake there because I didn't really understand it. But what my advice would be is to always buy um, a large format lens that does have uh, quite a big image circle and, and that ensures that it's not going to restrict you in the movements that, that you want to use uh, with your large format camera. So once again, small image circle, no movement, middle line, medium image circle, you've got movements, they're not too bad, but the large image circle you've got loads of movements, you're really not going to run out of the space with a large image circle. Right, I'll uh, 
show you the pictures of the uh, teapot now. Thank you for watching.